So let's talk about the title of this work, History of the Kings of Britain. Americans often don't understand what's meant by Britain here because in common parlance, we use the words Britain and England uh, to mean the same thing. They're not really the same thing in, in, even in the modern world, but we kind of use them the same way. But for Geoffrey of Monmouth and his audience, this meant something very particular. So in fact, we have to think about three different people groups. The first one are the people we call the Britons, B-R-I-T-O-N-S, the Britons. And the Britons are the, are the ancient people group who were living on the island that you might consider England today. It's usually called Albion in this work. Those were the Britons. Well, then in the fifth century, the Anglo-Saxons arrive and ultimately, after a couple centuries of warfare, displace them. Uh, and kind of push them off. Uh, and the Anglo-Saxons are who we call the English. So in fact, the Britons are a people who were then defeated by the English, right? So they're kind of a defeated people. They're still around today, uh, Welsh and Cornish people. The, the, these are, these are uh, the descendants of these people, right? Um, well, then what happens when you, when you get to the 11th century is uh, out of Northern France, uh, would call today, uh, a group called the Normans come and they defeat the English. And so the Normans have defeated the English who defeated the Britons. Well, so by the time Geoffrey of Monmouth is writing, uh, you know, in the 12th century, uh, he's writing history of the Kings of Britain. Britain here means the Kings of the, of the Britons, the, the people who lived here before the, the English. And so in this, there's a, uh, nationalist spirit, that we are in some ways the true heirs of this place. Not the Normans and not the English. We Britons, we're the ones who, who really are the, the real heritage uh, of this place. Um, so, uh, when we then look at uh, History of the Kings of Britain, how does it start? It starts with the ancient city of Troy. Well, this is common in Arthurian legend because a lot of ancient civilizations trace their lineage back to the city of Troy. And so the idea that we see here at, uh, is that, uh, and this, this, this first part is not invented uh, by Geoffrey of Monmouth, Virgil certainly has this, uh, is that what happens is when the city of Troy is destroyed in the Trojan War, a group of diaspora leave there and they wander around to find some other place to live. And the place that they ultimately found is Rome. And so the idea for the Romans were, well, we are the true descendants of Troy. We're the new Troy. Well, every other kingdom wants to be the new Troy too. So uh, a couple generations later, you get Brutus. And Brutus is the ancient uh, forebearer of the Britons. Uh, in fact, they say, he says here and other medieval sources say, well, the word Britain comes from the word the name Brutus. That's in fact not a, not a true etymology, but it, it doesn't matter. Uh, they believed it and, and there's this idea that, that it's connected in this way. And so because of a prophecy and such, which is, which is told here in History of the Kings of Britain uh, and some other things, Geoffrey of Monmouth, or sorry, uh, uh, Brutus goes off uh, on a series of adventures and ultimately comes to Albion, defeats the giants there and founds the people of, of, of Britain uh, when he does that. So for the for for Geoffrey of Monmouth when he's writing this way he's essentially saying we were the new Troy right we were the new Troy and as you go through the history of the kings of Britain you'll see a lot of conflict with Rome and the question is who are the true heirs of Troy and there's a really interesting moment that occurs in history of the kings of Britain where Brutus uh where, where Brutus has defeated Pandrasus uh, king Pandrasus who's a Greek king right uh, in a way, 
there's a a redo of the Trojan War. But this time, the heirs of the Trojans, uh, this time the heirs of the Trojans are the winners against the Greeks. So let's look at the text here. I take some comfort in the knowledge that I'm about to give my daughter to a young man of such great prowess. The nobility which flourishes in him and in his fame, which is well known to us, show him to be of the true race of Priam and Anchises, who other but he could have freed from their chains the exiles of Troy when they were enslaved by so many mighty princes, who other but he could have led them in their resistance to the king of the Greeks, or have challenged in battle such a vast concourse of warriors with so few men, and led their king in chains in the very first engagement. Since so noble a young man has been able to resist me so courageously, I give him my daughter Inoge. I, I also give him gold and silver, ships and corn, and whatsoever you will consider necessary for his journey. So here in this text, we see, he says, you are the true race of Priam, right? The king of Troy. There's this sense in, in which he's acknowledging, oh, you Brutus, that is to say, the ancestor of the Britons, you are the true, you are the true Trojan. And in this scene we see, and you have come back and defeated the Greeks. But we see here in uh, uh, Brutus's marriage to Pendrasus's daughter, this ultimate union in the Brit Britons uh, between the Greeks and the Trojans. That in some way that rift that starts during the Trojan War uh, without getting into that whole myth, uh, the rift that starts that causes the Trojan War is undone uh, in this way. Uh, it's a kind of uh, reversal of uh, of uh, the seduction or rape of of Helen uh, of Troy. Uh, instead, here we've got uh, she's taken an essence by force. Uh, you know, Inoge is taken by force, uh, uh, but it's reuniting the Greeks and the true heirs of the Trojans together, and so. When we see this, we have a sense that Arthur, ultimately, he will be able to trace his lineage back to Brutus, uh, uh, who is a reuniting of the new Troy and the Greeks together so that we can see the Britons are really not just the legitimate uh, people here in, in Albion, uh, in, in what we'd call England today, but also are uh, really have within them the bloodline of the greatest cultures uh, ever to live.